So I'm David, I'm David Henkel Wallace, and I'm the CEO of Cast AR. We make a set of glasses that you put on your head, and then what you do is when you look at the game board, a 3D world will spring out of the table, or the wall, or wherever you put your game board. And that 3D world really is 3D. You can walk around and look from all sides. You can lean in to look at, at more detail of objects, and you can look up and still see your friends whom you're playing with. Uh, as a company, Cast AR's focus is, is on games. However, we have developers who are already using these to do interesting things ranging from uh, aircraft simulation, uh, some medical applications, you know, real time looking in while, do, while doing surgery, to filling the room and having a multi-person holodeck-like experience. Um, so we had a game, for example, a classic arcade game, Marble Madness, where you run through uh, a track. In our case, the track's part of a three-dimensional world. You can look down deeply and see the world. The, the track, part of the track is lined up precisely on the table, and then of course you can look up. 3D objects like floating balloons can obscure your vision and you have to move to look around them. With two people, you can actually have two balls, two marbles running down the track, sometimes separately, sometimes together. You can even knock the other person's marble off if you're feeling competitive. Or you can just bother them since you're playing together in the real world, you can actually elbow them and <laughs> distract them. But the marbles roll up and down and fly up into, into, into the air and uh, really look like they're physically present. So for us, uh, the root, we, our roots are deep in, in tabletop gaming and arcade gaming. Uh, Rick, one of our founders, uh, was, uh, has, has written a number of, of AAA, worked on a number of AAA games, and, uh, and Jerry, our other founder, comes from gaming. She set up Valve's hardware lab for, for, from which all the VR and AR technology that uh, has sort of revived has come from. The two of them met there. So our focus is on on these personalized gaming experiences, or I should say socialized gaming experiences, the ones that you do at home. So our focus is that you have a box, grandma you know, buys, buys, the, buys the headsets for the grandchildren, and on Christmas Day, they tear open the paper, pull open the box, put down the, the board on the floor, or on the coffee table, and within a minute are playing. It's gotta be simple to use, approachable, and fun. And so that's why our focus has been on just having a game board, because we're so familiar with that already. Uh, other developers have found themselves less constrained by that and are draping them over, literally draping them over the windows of uh, an airplane cockpit, um, draping it over the patient so that you can look inside whilst doing endoscopic surgery. Or uh, I think I mentioned the holodeck experience where they fill the whole room and have their objective is to have 15 to 25 people having a Jurassic Park-like experience. So we're not constraining how people will use this in business uh, or, or gaming. In fact, our own gaming efforts are designed to provide source code, example source code, to show the odd ways that this, or unusual capabilities of this technology. Um, but from our point of view, the best sort of gateway drug to this kind of play is the familiar game board experience. Uh, AR and VR are similar sounding terms and they mean ways of giving people new experiences rather than just looking at a two-dimensional screen. I mean, VR, I think we know, is take the television, wrap it around your head, lock the world out. AR is everything else. And so it can range, it's, the term's been used for things like uh, Google Glass, where you just have a tiny little thing that you look up to see, to more immersive experiences like this. So we're not going to, first of all, get, I'm, I actually don't care what you call it. Some people have told us, oh, this is definitely VR. Okay. Uh, what I want people to make sure is what they call it is fun. And that's our focus, is, is having a good time. Now, when you look at other people, have, there are really only a few companies who are trying to give a more, uh, I'll say, engaged AR experience, something that tracks to the real world. And Microsoft is a good example. And their technology gives you a very narrow picture. I know they made some videos that show stuff all over the place, but you get a little 35 degree, uh, sorry, 23 degree picture in the middle of your visual field. You move your head, you lose it. So um, we, of course, fill your whole frame field of vision and there's no uh, adjustments, you know, when you put on the whole lens, you've got to adjust the IPD like you do with, a, say, a Gear VR. Uh, we're aiming for people who don't even want to know what the phrase IPD stands for. Right? They just want to put them on and have a good time. So I think on a technology basis, uh, it's quite different and from an experience basis, it's quite different. And then, most importantly, for the kinds of people we want to appeal to, it's quite different. Grandma is not going to buy 
$1,000 worth of uh, HoloLens for the grandkids. And uh, those are the people we think will have more fun using this technology. Yeah, so these early ones, they're hand assembled and hand calibrated and they've gone out to our early Kickstarter supporters and people who are willing to pay for just to get an, ex an idea of what the kind of capabilities are of this approach. Uh, at CES, we're going to announce our developer hardware. Um, still in the final stage of design, but it will weigh about half of this. Even this only weighs 130 grams, so um, it'll be a much lighter experience. Um, we will have some additional capabilities, fewer wires, plugging it together. Um, and we're going to be producing those in volume for shipment through the years to developers, early enthusiasts who want to experiment with the technology. Uh, similar to what uh, Oculus did with the DK1 and DK2. Uh, in about a year after that, so around CES, the beginning of uh, 2017, we will actually be announcing the consumer product. And that's the one that we think will be at a consumer price point um, and should be usable by anyone from eight, ages 8 to 88. Well, I'm not going to give you a numerical figure. I mean, that's 18 months out. But I'll tell you that uh, no one's buying a gamer PC for an 8-year-old. So it's got to be priced about the kind of thing that you would buy for a, for a kid as well as uh, that you might buy for yourself.